Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin Alhamdulillah. for everyone who take some time to come here to honor our guest speaker today, Dr. Sheikh Haifa Yunus. Let me just give you a little bit intro of Dr. Haifa inshallah. Dr. Sheikh Haifa Yunus is an American board certified OBGYN with roots from Iraq. Her pursuit of Islamic knowledge began when she began to study with various Islamic scholars from across the United States, which includes Sheikh Mukhtar Magrawi. While she also simultaneously attended individual courses and lectures on subjects including Aqidah, Fiqh, Usul of Fiqh, Hadith, and Tazkiyah, which is the purification of the soul. From the United States, she moved to Saudi Arabia when she graduated from the Mecca Institute of Islamic Studies and Al Huda Quran Memorization School, where she completed the memorization of the Quran. She is the founder and chairman of Jannah Institute and currently teaches seminars on the thematic commentary of various chapters of the Holy Quran and their practical relevance in our day to day living. Additionally, she offers retreats on key topics that inspire hearts, combining the inner essence of Islam with an outward expression of practice. And today we had just returned from her retreat and it was, in short, amazing, exactly. And for those who were privileged to be there, you know what we, you know what we have gone home with, all those pearls of Quran show. Dr. Haifa is passionate about spreading the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and igniting the love of Islam and the Quran through her teachings. I shall not bore you with looking at me right now and we're going to invite um, Sheikh Dr. Haifa Yunus to help address today's topic and on, we're going to open up the q and in the end. Inshallah. Assalamu yes, alaikum. Can I ask everyone, move this way, make the life of the people who comes, otherwise they have to go across you. So move here, fill out. Actually, I can see you better here. <laughs> and then everybody, always when you come to the masjid, always think of the people who will come. One day you will be also coming for whatever the reason, a little bit late. So move this way, so when people comes in, yeah. And there is still, alhamdulillah, plenty of room. You can sit here, it's all the same. Yeah, whichever you want. Come on in here, my dear. Up, in front of me, even better. MashaAllah. طيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشى ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري everyone for coming I know it's Monday and I know it's 6.30 so may Allah reward you you probably ran out of your home to come here on time so and always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's going to reward you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only reward you for your efforts and for registering and for coming but the most important thing may he ya Rabbi Amin and myself number one before anyone is that he put in your heart the ability to practice of what you're going to be learning or at least hearing because could be most of what I'm going to share with you you probably know it but the, the question is not only knowledge is do I do it and if I don't do it why do I not do it and if I do it then why alhamdulillah I'm doing it this is how we all learn so that's an, uh, number one number two it's a pleasure to be back here uh, I've been here before the COVID is it subhanallah yeah and I remember I was extremely impressed with this beautiful masjid it's so beautiful subhanallah and it's one of the at least the one I visited. You know what's the unique about your masjid? Of course you don't know because you live here so you never pay attention, right? What is the unique about your masjid for us as women? I think I said it before, you probably heard it. You don't know which is the entrance of the woman area. And I actually t t took pictures and sent it to my friend and I said, guess which one? And that really tells you that this, and may Allah reward everyone who helped in every step to make this as reality from the idea to the building to the money to the donation to the efforts to now maintaining it to now teaching to now running it this is not easy to do 
but the fact that they are thinking of women, it's really something you have to be very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I really mean this. You don't find this everywhere. There's parts of the world the woman is not allowed to come to the masjid, period. Period. Let alone you not only have amazing place and they give you option of downstairs or upstairs so it's easier for you, amazing entrance, but also there is a lot of uh, keenness here on women education. It's one of the few massages that I attended where the board and the, sh and the shiuch met with me and says, what can we do for the woman to learn? This is amazing, right? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil So the reason I'm sharing this with you is because whatever the masjid offer, you need to take it seriously. Because remember always the verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you are grateful, I'll give you more. And more in this case, or let's say first, how am I grateful? I feel this there is a ni'mah. I don't take it for granted. And I am grateful by being part of it. And I come to the masjid. I come for salah. I come for jumu'ah if I can. I come for the programs. And alhamdulillah now there is online and there is on-site. Yani what else? Literally, I say to myself, what am I going to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I was like, why didn't I learn? I didn't have a car. I don't know how to drive. Well, didn't you have a computer? Who doesn't? Don't you have a phone? Who doesn't? Don't you have an internet? Who doesn't these days? We don't live in Africa. Alhamdulillah, Rabbani. So, لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Be grateful. Feel this ni'mah. Don't say, oh, again, oh, it's Monday, I'm tired. Um, let me go next week. Don't do that. Because Allah will take it. And the way Allah take knowledge, you know how? How does Allah take knowledge? Yes. No, there's a hadith of Rasulullah In Allah la yaqwudu al-ilmu intiza'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not strip knowledge and just take it away. Rather, takes the scholars away. So when you lose your imam, or your scholar, or your teacher, the first thing you need to ask, was I grateful to that ni'mah? Allah says you don't need it, you don't appreciate it, you know the value of it, okay, I'll take it somewhere else. Somewhere else people will know the value of it. So always be grateful because لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ You're grateful, Allah will give you more. He'll give you more, he'll give you seminars, he'll give you teachers, he'll give you right and left. What you want, it's going to come so easy to you. You're going to start complaining, or I don't need it, or you don't show up, I'm too tired, everything else is more important. Allah says, okay, that's your choice. I'll just move them. And we live in a country where moving is the norm. I mean, people always move for job. It's very, very common. So don't be that community, and be always grateful every time you come in. And we lived it for two years. Didn't you live it for two years? This was completely closed, like all the other masajid. So don't take it for granted. That's number one. Be grateful, feel it, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you among shakri. That's you. And from those who, إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدُ Allah, Who fulfill, Allah said this in Surah Al-Tawbah, who fulfill, or verily, the people who furnish the masajid. It's not furnish, you go and buy things for the masjid. Is your presence number one, and you believe in Allah, and you perform salah, and you and you rely on Allah, and you struggle for the sake of Allah. Coming to the masjid is a struggle, like coming on a Monday at 6:30. I'm really impressed you all showed up, because it is first day of the week. School is gonna open soon. Some maybe just came back from overseas. I mean, there's a lot of issues, and probably there is traffic. But alhamdulillah. So be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. I say this everywhere I go, but specifically when I'm seeing this beauty and, and the keenness your leaders for this to happen, I can't tell you. And may Allah reward everybody how keen they were, how meticulous about the details and the timing and the questions and the topic. And I'm coming to the topic in a second. So why do you think this topic was chosen? I'm gonna make a disclaimer, it's not my choice. I was asked, actually, and I liked it, actually, because it is really nice to have people start thinking about realities. Alhamdulillah, you all are nodding your head. Alhamdulillah, it is a reality. And so when, when, when I was asked to talk about that, and I was like, hmm, interesting. And why is that? 
And I didn't ask, but I'm asking you, why do you think we need to learn this? I don't think you've ever seen a title called Fiqh of ad uh, uh, Adornment. Have you? No. So why? What's wrong with us? Alhamdulillah, we are all so beautiful. Right? You're too quiet. I'm worried. <laughs> why is that? Why? You're scared to say what reality is? Why do you think we need to study? Why did you show up? Because you want to learn. Learn about what? Come on in. Bismillah. Yalla ya farhana. Bismillah. So these days, it's extremely difficult to stay modest because of all the influences we have. True or false, this statement. If you have an exam and this statement comes in, true or false? Very true or very, very true? Very, very true, right? The influencers, the YouTubers, the Hollywood stars, the movies, what do they spread? Right? And I'm talking about only the way we look. I'm not talking about anything else, because that's our topic. What do they spread? What do they make it so beautiful? It's like a woman wearing a beautiful hijab and abaya, right? And under it, it's like, wow, mashallah. I wish <laughs> they will not be having this seminar, right? Unfortunately, it's a time, and this is, unfortunately, and I look at it as Allah will reward me more because it's a difficult time. And if I say it's an easy time, then I'm living, as you all heard me in the retreat, in the la-la land. I'm living in my own world, and it is not reality. Everything around you, and those of you who are working women, you probably see this, or if you, if you don't work, and, but you work at home, or you take your children to school, and you see this. Everybody talks about beauty and how to beautify yourself in this way or that way dress code what is the fashion what is the color what is the the newest way of dress wearing this or wearing that and that's one issue and the other issue is what literally this is angels i don't think i need this this course in this city what is the other things women are doing these days and Muslim women, and young and old. What? I should uh, show you the list of the questions I received. What is it? Changing the creation of Allah, right? Why there are so many questions about Botox? Or there's so many questions about plastic surgeries? Why? Because that's reality. So that's another thing that we are bombarded that's the, the, the standards of beauty has changed. Let's put it this way. Let's all agree. The standards of beauty has changed. True or false? Right? And especially the youth. May Allah help the youth. Honestly. Because the way that people will tell you you're beautiful is not the same way 10 years ago or 20 or 30 or 40. One. And we are all women and we have to agree on this and accept the fact we all want to look beautiful. It's something in us. And you all smile when someone looks at you and says, you're so beautiful. You're going to get upset and you, of course you're going to smile. And it's going to be even, you will be more happier when someone looks at you, you're beautiful and your daughter is even more beautiful. I always say this to my friends and my patients. I was like, the only woman that's happy when she is told some, another woman is prettier than her, it's her daughter. That's it. Anyone else, don't say it. So beauty is something that we are bombarded. We are, uh, it's becoming ideal. It's, it's becoming like, like the idol. Like this is what I want to be. Everybody wants to be beautiful. Every, everyone wants to be better than everyone, the way they look, the way they dress. It's external beauty. And the sad part, which I'm going to come to it in a second, is there is no emphasis on internal beauty. No one, like me as an individual, when I'm standing in front of the mirror as a woman, which we all do, and I look at the mirror, the question is always, do I look nice? Is that looks fine? Do I need to do this or to do that? But I never ask myself, does my heart look beautiful? 
Does my heart look crystal clear? Does, is my heart shining? And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at? And we shared this hadith in the retreat. In Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa ajsamikum walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. Allah does not look at your external look or my external look or my, the, the shape of my body. Rather, he looks at my deeds and my heart. And now put these together, put them on two like scale, on a scale, one side of the scale and the other, and see where is the emphasis as woman? Where is the emphasis? In this or in that? As external beauty, am I right? Am I correct? Do we emphasize on our internal beauty? Yes or no? I love it. Very, no. <laughs> it's so honest because that's reality. No, right? We don't, right? How many people look at you and says, how does your heart feel this morning? Do you have a lot of uh, anger in it? Right? But everybody looks at like, ah, your skin is shining today. What cream you use? Right? What did you do last night? I think you slept a good night. You had a good night's sleep because your face is shining. That's how we hear, right? Or when you come and you had something different, don't you look at everybody waiting? It's like nobody compliment. And, you, and you are looking for the compliment, so what do you say? Do you see anything different in me? Right? Natural, normal. I'm not going to say this is abnormal. We're human, we're women. But the, inf the emphasis shouldn't be on this. The emphasis should be on beauty internal. That's the first thing I want to let's, let's agree on. Before I come to the beauty, I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to discuss the second part of the title. In fact, I added the second part of the title. Because if I have the second part, the first part becomes very easy. And I want you all to give me your heart and brain. So what was the title? Fiqh of, I think you have the title in front of you. Can anybody read it for me? Because I can't see the screen. So Fiqh of Adornment and Modesty. I am going to turn it around and I'm going to start talking about modesty. Before I speak and I want you to talk to me, all of you. What is the relationship between modesty and beauty? And why do I have to put them together? Anyone? Think with me, and this is going to help you make life easy. Let's put it this way. What is the relationship between modesty and fiqh of beauty? Is, okay, let's make it even easier. Is there a relationship? Well, of course, otherwise there wouldn't be the title. Alhamdulillah. What is the relationship? I can't hear you. So modesty related to internal beauty, true. But I am going to say, well, modesty related to external beauty. Let's make our life easy. Because that's what we focus on, right? So is it related to external beauty? Yes or no? Perfect. Now the question is how? This is a really tough question. I should have given you question and answers before the, I start. What is the relationship? Think with me. Anyone? Gave up? If I have it, the second one, the standards of the beauty will change. I'm still going to be looking beautiful outside. But what defines beauty outside will change. One. And which standards I am going to follow to be beautiful. Second, I want you all to think with me. Now I'm giving you clues. So if I have it, someone, I look at you and say, MashaAllah, she has haya. That's what modesty. One of the translations of it. So haya, she has haya. What do I see external? And then I'm going to come and talk to you about what is all this haya about. If I say, this woman has haya, you look at me and say, she has haya. What did you see in me? Or what did I see in you that I qualify or you qualify for that term? Yes, was ever. I will not put the word shyness because people misuse this word, especially in this society. Because shyness in this society is defined as 
weakness. So I agree with you and I know what you meant, but I'm going to put it on this side. Let's say the second part you said. So the person who has haya, and I'm just telling you what she said and tell me if you agree, is not interested in attracting the attention of people, true or false. So I don't want to be noticed. I don't want to look beautiful. Like I'm 16, 17. I'm really uh, working on your brain today, <laughs> right? Alhamdulillah. Because this is exactly how you look at things. You literally have to slice it. Unless you sliced it, and unless you look at every angle of it, applying it is not easy. I can give you all the lectures and all the, 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 the hadiths and the ayat, and then you're going to, okay, fine, and you go out and you go to reality. But you need to really slice it one by one. So that when you look at someone and say, this woman, and it's usually, usually, define, women are defined by this character. By the way, it's not only women. Because al -Rasul, I think it's al Rasul والسلام, who said, al haya jameel or al haya hasan actually. Uh, uh, modesty is beautiful, is, is, is excellent, but in women is even more. Which tells you, it's in both. But let's focus on women, and we're focusing on the external today, because it has so many... These are all the questions you said. I think I'll miss my flight tomorrow morning. Look at that. Do you see this? It's, it's back and forth. <laughs> all right, Jazakumullah khair. Okay. Let's see what Allah will open. I'm sure a lot of these questions, once you understand the concept, you're not going to ask halal or haram anymore. And this is what I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me speak. Because if you know the concept and you know what Allah wants from you, then the question of halal and haram is going to be much easier that to, un to answer by yourself. So the question is, haya is a concept in Islam, true or false? Okay, is it in the Quran? This is the first thing, anything you learn, always ask yourself, is it in the Quran? Yes or no? Alhamdulillah. Who was described? The word haya used, and it's a woman. Yes. No. Sayyida Maryam was not, which is so interesting, because her, her main character of Sayyida Maryam was her obedience to Allah and her submission to Allah. So, of course, she is, but she is haya. So, Sayyida Musa was described. I heard Sayyida Musa. Ah. So, go to Surah Al Qasas the stories, right? And it's in the beginning of the story where Sayyidina Musa left Egypt because he was so scared he would be killed. And he went to Madian. And he came to the place where there were a well or there was a water. And then there were men collecting the water. You know the story, right? And then he noticed there's two women. They're not getting there. They're not getting closer. Why? They need the water. And he asked them, right? They looked at him and says, we're not getting close until all these men move. Number one, look at this. These two women, they did not come. They need the water because they said then, and our father is an old man, meaning he cannot get come. We have to do it. But we're not going to go and be with all these men. Let them finish. And then we are doing it. And then Sayyidina Musa, فَسَقَ لَهُمَا وَتَوَلَّا إِلَى الظُّلْ So Sayyidina Musa did it for them, and then he went to the side. Then the word haya came. فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاء One of them, and we don't know who is she, her name is not even mentioned. The issue is not the name. And this, I'm going to just for a second stop here and ask you, when someone mentions your name, and don't answer me, this is just for you to think, what is the next word will come to it? Not your father's name. I'm talking about description. So when somebody says Sarah, I don't know if there is any Sarah in this group, but when somebody says Sarah, what is the next description? And this is what you need to ask yourself. Is it the description of, these are the two daughters of Sayyidina Shu'aib. And they came, one of them, one of them, we don't know even her name. 
تمشي على استحياء she is walking with modesty why يعني there is no other description a woman needs to be described in the Quran but that one what does that tell you what does that tell you this is your creator and mine and he created them and he created Sayyidina Musa and this is his words when he described this this woman coming to Sayyidina Musa and by the way she wanted to marry him and she suggested to her father that but Allah described her tamshi ala istihya what does that mean it's a plus or a minus it's a positive character or a minor or or a negative character then the first question i say am i this woman do i want to be that woman do you want to be yes or no the yes is too uh... okay it's up to you for me absolutely i want i want allah to describe me the same way he described that woman it's your choice and in, in one reading they said because here فَجَاءَتُ إِحْدَاهُمَ عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءٍ تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءٍ فَقَالَتْ and then she said so she was walking with modesty she came to him to Sayyidina Musa and then she said our fa- my father is inviting you and one reading is عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءٍ فَقَالَتْ is when she was talking to him she was talking to him with modesty So the first thing I want you to know that this modesty is in the Quran. This is not something the scholars invented or this was after Rasulullah This is something in the Quran. What is the uh, who is the other person in the Quran described with the action of haya? I'm, I can't hear you. No. Not Sayyidina Yusuf, خير من استأجرت القوي الأمين. The strong, the trustworthy. Who is it? I'll give you a clue. Allah was saying, don't do that because what you do will hurt him and he is modest and he's not going to tell you. Sayyidina Rasul alayhi salatu wassalam. It's in Surah Al-Ahzab. When he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Sahaba, to the companion, Right? Don't enter the homes of Rasulullah. And of course, the home of Rasulullah is not a huge house, it's a room. Don't enter unless it, you are allowed to. You are given permission. And then, when you are given permission, come in and eat and don't stay, leave. This is the, the verse, right? And, and then Allah is saying, Why? He said, Because when you stay, the Rasulullah will be. Hurt. In the dark, you the Nabi. It because you are you are invading his privacy. You know how we get upset when someone invade our privacy, our privacy. فيستحيي منكم. He will feel modest. Here is shy because he doesn't want to hurt you. But then who said? And what's the next word in this? والله لا يستحيي من الحق. And Allah will never feel shy from saying the truth. One of the description of Allah is Hayi. Hayi. Allah is Hayi. And this is in a beautiful way. He said, In Allah Hayi, Kareemun Hayi, Yastahi Ayyarfa Abdahu Yada, Fayruddahu Khaiba. Allah is so shy that you and I, please forgive me the sinners, we raise our hand. To ask him, although we don't deserve it. But because Allah is Hayy, you know, when you say, I'm too shy to say no, I just can't say no. It's just difficult. And Allah is exalted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his criteria, one of his descriptions is Hayy. So, number one, Haya, this bashfulness, and I don't use the word shyness, because unfortunately, shyness is always looked at as negative and as weakness. But it is definitely part of it. That you are too shy to look at someone in their eyes. Right? But you are not shy to say the truth. That's nothing to do with haya. The woman, the Sahabiyat, if you remember the fiqh of menstruation we taught here, how many questions were here 
were asked by the companion woman. And I, when I was reading this, I was like, me and I'm an OBGYN, I don't think I'm, I'm comfortable asking an imam this question, let alone the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. So you need to know that the bashfulness, the haya, the humbleness, use the word shyness if you want, is in interaction with the same gender and the opposite gender, and with the young and with the old. And it is absolutely a positive uh, 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 trait. طيب, what does this have to do with fuqh zina All this introduction. You are not with me. Yes, no, you are not. You're not answering me. Some of you come here. There's, there's, uh, uh, there's chairs here. You can come from the back if you don't want to come from me. Come from the back and there's chairs here. And I can see you better and you see me better. طيب. When I am, and then I'm going to come here, right? And I'm going to come here and I will tell you a couple of the hadiths of Rasul about haya. And then we will come to it. How many of you in this room can easily raise her hand with no doubt and she says, I am a believer? Whoa, you didn't raise your hand? Okay. You're a believer. You're a mu'mina. You have iman. You have faith. Anybody? Anybody has doubts? طيب. Same question, but in a different way. How many of you in this room, young and old, right? And don't worry, the camera is not on you. The camera is on me. So you're fine. They will say, I have this haya, this modesty. I have it. Ya Rahman, not even an, a hand. I don't... I. I didn't say percentage because he alayhi salatu wasalam did not give me percentages. The reason I'm asking you because that's a hadith for Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam coming soon. None. Okay. Bismillah. Are you ready? Don't get depressed. Okay. Don't feel sad. He said alayhi salatu wasalam Al-Iman wal-Haya qurina jami'a Faith, belief, and modesty are together. Listen to the next one. إذا رفع أحدهما رفع الآخر. If one is lifted, the other one is lifted. One is gone, the other one is gone. So he didn't give me percentage. I wish. I wish. So this is extremely important question for each one of you. And don't look at anybody else. Because I always say this, and you probably have heard it from me. When I am in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's going to ask me. He's not going to tell me what she did or he did. It's me. So remember, al-haya wal iman qurina jami'a. Bashfulness, modesty, use the word shyness if you like, and iman are together. Like when we say I'm a believer, meaning I am, I bear witness, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Right? If you remove one of them, iman is gone. You're not. So put in your mind this one, al-haya wal-iman. And I'm going to share with you another hadith. Al-Rasul alayhi salatu was salam saw a man admonishing the other man. And the man was telling him you're, the meaning of, you're too shy. Literally, you are too shy. Be, basically, stop being too shy. And you hear this all the time. And you know what Al-Rasul alayhi salatu was salam said? Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Bashfulness is all good. Humbleness and modesty and bashfulness brings nothing but good. I want you to memorize this. All of you. Because unless I keep reminding myself of what my Rasul and yours, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, when I leave that door, it's hard to practice what I am saying. Unless I keep bringing this to my mind, young and old. Be bashful, be modest, bring you khair. Don't worry what they say. Don't worry what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about the time we are living in. Your Rasul and mine said, it brings all khair. There was um, a Sahabi, his name is Al-Ashaj, or his kunya is Al-Ashaj, and Rasul wasalam, looked at him. And before I give you this hadith, how many of you, again, I'm going to keep asking you today, 
الحمد لله You say confidently, young and old, I have a trait in me, in me, whether I was born with it or whether I really worked on myself, and Allah loves that trait. I have a character that I really worked hard on. Let's, let's use the, the terminology we all use these days. I worked hard on it, and Allah loves it. Can anyone here tell me yes and tell me what is that? Yes. Truthfulness. Absolutely. In Allah yuhibbu sadiqin. Alhamdulillah. And truthfulness across the board. Don't answer me because that's not... But when I say I have this character, meaning across the board, whether it is for me or with me, if I said the truth, I'm going to be hurt. And if I said the truth, maybe somebody I really love will get hurt. Doesn't matter. Allah loves it. So Rasulullah looked at Al Ashaj and he looked at him and says, You have two criteria Allah loves. Imagine this Rasulullah looks at you and say this. And he said, What is these two I have? He said, Al Hilmu wal Haya. Forbearance and bashfulness. That's a man. Forbearance, meaning patient. You take things, you don't overreact, you don't react right away. You think, you take your time. And bashfulness or modesty. Then the man asked him, he said, Ya Rasulullah, was this given to me? Meaning, it's my nature? And he said, yes. Allah gave it to you. And he said, Alhamdulillah, that he, Allah gave me something he loves. That's why I asked you, what do you have? And dig deep in yourself. You will find one. We're not that bad. Maybe we're not the best. But we're not that bad also. So dig in you and says, what do I have that Allah loves? And that the question came in. And the question came in, is it something, this modesty, is it something I was born with? Well, yes, he was. But everyone? Or this is something I can accomplish? Something I can learn? What do you think? So for somebody who doesn't have it, can they change? Yes or no? Absolutely. Absolutely, because his question to Rasulullah that's what the scholars are saying. The fact he asked him, and there is two possibilities, otherwise he wouldn't have asked him. So if I don't have it, if I don't have it, don't despair, because this is something I can change. Have you not became more patient when you are older, at least a good number of you? Remember, in your 20s, there's things which you were so upset about. These days, what do you say? Uh-huh, been there, done that. Ah, who cares? And then you would look at yourself. Mean, I change, and you change. Human being by nature is a changeable. And we can change to the good, and unfortunately we also can change to the bad. So now, next, come to the next one. What is Haya? And what it has to do with the beauty? I didn't come to the beauty yet. <laughs> That's okay, don't worry. After Maghrib, we have all these list of questions. Because the questions will answer all the questions in your mind. I don't think they left anything. What is, what, what is a beauty? I mean, what is modesty? And Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud defined it. And he said, Al-haya an tahfaz al-ra'sa wa ma wa'a. Those of you who know Arabic, and I'll translate. Haya, I have this, I am modest, I'm shy, I'm humble, that I am so careful and aware, this is how he described it, of my head and what it contains. Hmm, what does my head contain? Number one, what does my head contain? Look at me, what does it contain? Eyes. Come on, Bismillah, look at me, right? And let me look at you, we're all the same, right? So it has eyes, huh? tongue, ears, 
And the most important thing is the brain or the why, the wisdom or the aql, whatever word. So haya, you protect these. And tahfad al-ra'is wa ma wa'a. You protect these. I'll come to it in a second. One, two. Wa an tahfad al-batn wa ma hawa. And you protect the abdomen. What does the abdomen contain? Now it's an anatomy question. The abdomen is the area between the breast and including the private parts. So your stomach, exactly, your stomach and your private part. Meaning, beware of or be careful of what you put in your mouth and your private part. This two, right? And the other, the other one is you look at the dunya and your focus is on the akhirah. I don't remember exactly how he said it. And that's you. Ah, alhamdulillah, ya rabbi lakal hamd. Wa an tathkur al mauta wal bala. Because it rhymes. And you remember death and that we will be decomposed. And tathkur al mauta wal bala. Because once you remember, when you keep reminding yourself the end, a lot of what we struggle in this life becomes much easy. That's why the connection between haya and beauty is coming. I hope it's now you all are start thinking where is the connection. If I protect my eyes and if I protect my ears and if I protect how I think and if I protect my tongue, 80% of my problems is solved. 80%. Because food, alhamdulillah, we don't have a lot of issues with food. We all eat halal, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Remember the, the example I gave you? I'm not going to say it here, right? And then you come to the private part, walillah, alhamdulillah, majority of Muslims, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. But our problem and our weakness, because what is it you just said? It's the influence. What I see, what I see, whether I see in public, whether I see online, whether I see on the social media, everything I am seeing these days tells you what? For women externally, what does it tell you? No haya, period. Expose, wear whatever you, uh, you wear, right? Put a lot of makeup, show your beauty, what is the big deal? It's my choice, all this you hear, right? And of course I'm gonna get affected. I'm a woman. And again, we started saying that we love to look beautiful and we love to hear the compliment. If you tell me I don't care, I was like, let me talk to you after the class. Very unlikely, unless you're really becoming so much with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't look at it. But reality, we're not there and we need to be practical. So if I am guarding my eyes, my ears, my tongue, my, my uh, brain, what I'm seeing, what I am thinking, what is coming in my mind when I see this beauty and we are bombarded with it. You stand up in the line in a grocery shop. What do you see? You look at the right or the left. Either you eat all the junk food or you're going to see all the junk material. True or false? Does anyone put a sign say, Astaghfirullah? Like remember Allah? Remember you're going to die? No. It's all about how to lose weight, or how to look beautiful, or they put you the, the picture of the most beautiful person who Allah knows in reality what they are. So, this is the haya, and there is two kinds of haya. I am shy, humble, modest in front of you, and that is why, if that's how I am, when I am alone in my room, I do whatever I want. The one that you all have to know, and you work on yourself, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the haya from whom? Yes. Al haya min Allah. That Allah is looking at me. And unless I know who is Allah, this is not going to have the impact it should have. My creator. Remember, we said this all for about 20 minutes in the retreat. He's my creator. He's my sustainer. He's the one who gives me everything. He's the one who's able of taking everything from me in a second, in a blink of an eye. And when I need something, all of us, remember, what do we do? Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Right? 
And I always bring this, this example. If you're driving a car in the middle of the night and the car broke, and guess what? Your phone is dead. After you panic, what are you going to say? Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please, don't leave me alone, please. And non- non-Muslims, what do they say? Oh my God, please. Anyone who doesn't, be- even they don't believe in anything, they will be calling something. So if I keep reminding myself that he is looking at me, when I look at the mirror, and I don't see what people say about me, or what do you think? I'm getting ready to go out. I, I, like, I think I'm going to impress them. Before you say this, ask yourself. Always, wallah, this is the best way. You know the taqwa everybody talks about? This is taqwa. You look at the mirror and you say, Ya Allah, are you happy with me? Do you think I look beautiful? And what is the standard of beauty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's not the standard of the beauty of the magazines or the influencers, or the YouTube, or the Hollywood stars. It's a complete different beauty. And it's a beauty of this life and a beauty of the life after. So I always have to have this relationship with Allah. And that relationship with Allah, when I keep reminding myself, even when I am weak, and I will be weak, when I will be weak, I'm going to say this. Now I need to move because of the time, subhanAllah. What is zina? Anybody in this room named zina? No? Yes? No? Come on in, it's okay, it's a beautiful name. I don't know who's, no, nobody, I don't know. Maybe, yes, anyway. So zina is a beautiful name. And what is zina? You translate it to? It's adornment and it's beauty, right? Is it in the Quran? I can't hear you. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's like, mm, maybe. I think she's, the way she's asking the answer is yes. Of course, yes. Right? And the zina in the Quran, and this is what we all need to learn, it didn't come as negative all the time. It didn't come as negative. No, I read it to you this morning. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ Say, Ya Rasulullah, who, who made the zina, the beauty that Allah created for his servants, who made it haram? Basically, why you are making it haram? And then Allah says, no. إِنَّمْ قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشِ Allah, what made, what Allah made haram is fawahish. Fawahish is indecency. But beauty is not haram. So that's, remember this. Beauty is not haram. I want you all to know again, we're going to slice it. So looking beautiful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, externally and internally, absolutely fine. But also came as negative. Yes or no? When Allah described the zina of the dunya, al-mal wal banun zina al hayat al-dunya. Children and wealth is the beauty of this dunya. Okay, what's wrong with that, Ya Allah? He didn't say it's negative, but he showed you the better. You all read it on Surah Al-Kaf on Jum'ah. وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ Baqiyat Salihat, the good, that everlasting, which most scholars tell you it is a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are much better than that. So now I need to come and I say, Zina is not all haram. Because then I don't know my deen. Zina came as positive and came as negative. Clear? Okay. Now, which zina? Which zina is negative and which zina is positive? Okay, I am again worried. At all? You haven't thought of this topic at all? Jazakallah khair, ya Sheikh Yasin. So you absolutely needed this topic. Bismillah. You mean the positive one? So she, she said it in a simple, easy way. 
So the negative zina, very simple. You, let's not use complicated words. The negative zina is the way that's going to push me away from my creator. And the positive one is the one that's going to bring me closer to my creator. Simple, easy. طيب. Did Allah says, don't show your beauty? That's a million dollar question. Uh, there, is, there is only two answers, either yes or no. There is no if or in between. Did Allah says in the Quran, don't show your beauty? How many say yes? طيب. And how many say no? And how many say, I have no idea? Ah, oh, ouch. Ouch, ya Sadi. <laughs> Absolutely, he said it. وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا You learned nothing today except this line. All the questions in this, you will know the answer right away. This is an order from your Creator and mine. And this is in Surah An-Nur. This is, this is, um, yeah, this is actually just before the verse or just before the line of the hijab. Just before, right? Allah starts by saying, tell the believing men first, lower their gaze, right? And guard your private part. Verily, Allah is all knowing of what you do. And then he said, and tell the believing woman, lower your gaze and don't show your beauty. Don't show your beauty. Why do I need to learn this? Literally, to me, this is the foundation. I don't have to ask any mufti. I don't have to ask any imam. The foundation, Allah says, don't show your beauty. And any don't in the Quran, wala, it means if I don't do it, meaning actually doing it is haram. Learn this concept. Unless Allah explain further that it is not haram, not in this verse. Showing my beauty except to few people. And he mentioned the few people, which is basically your mahrams. Your father, your brother, your nephews, the, the, the people who you cannot marry. Clear? Now let's come to anything you want to do. So is makeup haram? Is nail polish is haram? Just a second, don't answer me. These are the questions. Is nail polish haram? Is makeup haram? No. Okay, perfect. And I, I didn't say yes or no. But the mufti right away said, is the, oh, the boy, the young mufti said no. I'm sure everybody will ask him. Okay. <laughs> so this is the question. Makeup, right? Uh, uh, nail polish. Clothes that will show my, my beauty. Any kind of clothes that will show my beauty. Changing things so I look more prettier and more beautiful. What is the ruling? Absolutely no. Absolutely no. Alhamdulillah, nobody asks you. Alhamdulillah, nobody asks you. Exactly. So here you go. This is what my deen and yours. My deen and yours is use the haqqal. You need to think. It's not yes and no. There's never yes and no. It all depends. Even you tell me, is alcohol haram? I, mashallah, <laughs> and I will say, so I don't change his answer. I will say, yes, except in certain circumstances. If I'm not going to drink it and I'm going to die, then uh, uh, alcohol becomes obligation. Becomes obligation. If I'm going to die, for sure, not I think, for sure. So nothing is, is yes and no, haram, or you're going to go to Jahannam. So the foundation, each woman in this room, and I don't know how many people are listening to me, the foundation, when you are in front of that mirror, whatever you are doing and showing, showing to the non-mahram, why are you doing it? To look beautiful. So is that allowed? Yes or no? Khalas, no. Done. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. Did you get it? 
So me people, you know what? They, this is, um, it's here also, and I'm going to throw it here. Is the halal nail polish halal? I was like, you just said halal. What? You hear this? You hear it? This is the most common one. And I said, what is halal nail polish? I, I have no idea. I was like, what is halal nail polish? I was like, oh, the nail polish, that they say, that you can do your wudu, and it is valid. Okay. Just a second. And I say, okay, I am not going to argue, but I'm going to tell you as if I, I answer from number one, me as a physician. How many in my career medications came in with studies and they said it's absolutely safe or no problem, we use it. And then 10 years later, they pulled it out of the market. Have you heard this? Why? Because the, the research showed it is not. Can this be under this category? Is there is a possibility? So if that happened, what happened to all my salah? Nullified, because I don't have wudu. One. And they say, okay, well, I didn't know. I said, okay, I'm coming with you. Answer me now this question, including when you are on your monthly period, because that's what woman does. I said, why you are doing your nail polish? Just answer me. I'm, don't, I'm not going to tell you halal or haram. Why do you put your nail polish? Why do you put lipstick? Why do you put makeup? Why? To look beautiful. And what did Allah says in the Quran about beauty? End of the story. Then it is your choice. That's what I tell a woman. It's your choice. Alhamdulillah. I, am not, I, I won't be able to defend you even if I want to. Because what did Allah says in the Quran? No soul will carry the burden of the other soul. So anything you are doing to make yourself prettier and that beauty is going to be shown publicly, think twice. Those who you know me, I don't use the word haram very, very like loose. Think of that. Now we're going to come deeper now. Because I was asked to speak frankly, and I always like to speak frankly. What do we wear? What do we wear? Right? As Muslim, as a woman who just learned, or I know it since I was whatever age, that don't show your beauty. And please forgive me. When I am wearing something tight that shows the description of my body why I'm doing it tell me why because you are waiting for someone to tell you what a beautiful body you have right true or false right or you feel beautiful sometimes you don't even want anyone but you want to feel beautiful I have no problem with that on the contrary, it's good to feel beautiful, but don't show it outside. Because that's what Allah said. This is what I asked you. Is it haram to show your beauty? Don't say yes right away. Is where are you, what, where are you doing it? You want to put makeup, you're in your home, go and then do it. And enjoy the feeling. But Allah said, La yubdina, don't show it. With a few exceptions. Another huge problem we have huge we talked about this morning in the retreat when we are women together when we are women together you all know what i'm gonna say where is the haya where is the haya from allah is not people where is the haya from allah he's looking at me yes i am with women but he's looking at me Right, my creator looking at me and he is not happy with the way I look, but everybody else is doing it and I'm fine with that. Is that who you want to be? Is that who you want to meet Allah with? And I'll ask every woman in this room, young and old, do you have any doubt that you will meet Allah? Do you have any doubt? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Look at how he is so certain. Because this is true. Right? And what did Allah says? Each one 
each one of them will come to Allah alone. And I say this to myself before anybody, I better have a good excuse to say to him, why did I dress this way, Ya Allah? Why couldn't I dress the way it pleases you? Why did I dress the way it pleases people? Why? Honestly, I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. And it's too late there, because even if I have an answer, and he explained it to me, and he shared to me, and he told me who is he, and he said, have haya from me. And he said, haya is with iman. That's why I shared with you modesty first. Because if I know this concept, the rest becomes very easy. If my focus Allah and what pleases him, I don't care what my friends does. Because they will not come to my rescue. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ The day that you and I will run away from our siblings, from our parents, from our spouses, and from our children. Those children that is part of you, you will be running away and they will be running away. Because everybody will be busy with their own. You know what Sayyidah Aisha asked? Look at Al-Haya. He was telling her, Rasul that on the day of judgment, when the second blow comes in, everybody will come out from the grave naked. You know that? And she said, Ya Rasulullah, look at Al-Haya. And we will be looking at each other. Look at the Haya she had. And you know what he responded? الأمر أعظم يا عائشة. That day, the matter will be way overwhelming. Nobody will be looking at the other, with or without clothes. You know, if there is an earthquake, think of it. Earthquake is a minor يوم القيامة. إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها. When the earth will go through earthquake. If there is an earthquake, you're going to look at what your neighbor is wearing. You'll be looking at nafsi, nafsi. Let me, let me. Just, just go. When you are in plane and they tell you there's an emergency evacuation, what do they tell you? Leave everything behind you. Leave everything behind you. So what we all need, and then this all fiqh zina, and this all the dress issues we're all talking about. If I just put two foundations, one, he is looking at me, and I'm going to be standing in front of him. And two, he told me, don't show your beauty, period, period. And the choice is mine. This is the beauty. You know what the most beautiful thing about our deen? It's a choice. We all talk about choices these days. And I've said this many times. People always ask me, is hijab a choice? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Oh, and people look at me, really? I said, yeah. It's your choice to obey Allah or not to obey Allah. It's up to you. So, zina, whether I am with a woman, then where is the haya from Allah? Where is the haya from Allah? And if I am with the other gender, he absolutely, clearly stated it. La yubdina zinatahunna. So make up my hair, color my hair, uh, do my eyebrow, all these questions, microblading, you name it, it's there. Why you are doing it? And not all of them are haram, by the way. And all the scholars will tell you, if you're putting makeup for your husband, absolutely, it's not only highly recommended, it's even more than highly recommended. And look at us normally, what do we do? I'm not gonna even comment because you all know. Right? So exactly what Allah is telling me and you, we're not doing. And what he told me not to do, we are doing. Simple, easy. Is it done? And what is, and we have to talk about this. What is hijab? Because part of the zina. What is hijab? I need to hear it. What is the, okay. Because I don't want to get into a lot of discussion. What is the Islamic dress code? What's the Islamic dress code? You, how many of you work outside, uh, outside with non-Muslims? Those people ask you. 
So what do you say? What is Islamic dress code? Huh? What, what, if, I don't know if you wear it or not, but if your friends ask you, regardless, what do you tell them? Say that again. I love it. I wish I can answer this way. I represent who I, who I am when I wear my hijab. Wow. How old are you? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Twelve. I represent who I am. Why we are shy, who are we? Why? SubhanAllah, I always say this to the woman. Allah said, Kuntum khayra umma ukhrijat nas. You were the best nation that was brought forth on this earth. And I follow everybody else. Whatever they do. This year the pants are wider, I'm doing it. Next year the, the pant is shorter, I am doing it. Why? Why not who I am? Who I am? And what did he tell me? You know, I, in, in our practical, I say, if I know your size, then you are not wearing hijab. You're describing your body, period. Because hijab is not covering the hair only. And this is a false impression. I don't know who spread that rumor. And now it became fact. It's not covering the hair. Though covering the hair is the most difficult part. And any one of you who have wore hijab and before they did not, you know what I'm talking about. Because the hair is the most beautiful part in the woman. Do you know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the men after hajj or after umrah? He gave them two options. And Rasulullah shave the head or cut. Why? And why he made dua three times for those who shave the head? Why? Because it is very hard. Because it's part of your who you are and the beauty, even for the man, is the hair. And you're shaving it completely for Allah. What iman you have to have. So covering the hair, I am, it's absolutely one of the most difficult final piece of the puzzle. But that's not the whole puzzle. Because if I am wearing very tight, please forgive me, we're all women, but we really need to know this. When, if I am wearing very tight, tight jeans, tight, am I showing my beauty? Then where is my hijab? then I am disobeying him. Although I put the hardest one, this is why I feel so hard. I really feel pain when I see this. I was like, Ya Allah, she made the, the, the most difficult decision. But the most important thing that you told her not to do, she's not doing. And that's what we need to teach our woman. It is not covering the hair only. It is what you are wearing. It's modesty. Don't show your beauty, period. Period. And you know what is the other major problem we are facing? And I said this in the retreat, and I remember the saying of Sayyidah Aisha. You know what she said after Rasulullah Wasallam? She said, if Rasulullah Wasallam saw the woman these days, not now, hers, these days he would have prevented them from coming to the masjid. Can you believe it? How do we feel when you go to a masjid and there is no place for a woman to pray? You feel so sad, discriminated, you're looked at lower, which is true. But at the same time, how I am coming to the masjid? Yanas, yani what we are seeing these days is beyond my imagination. I come to the masjid as if I am going to Walmart. Same. And this is the house of my creator. And this is the house of my creator who puts requirement. And I always ask you, if you have this rule in your home, where you want everyone that they come, they take off your shoes. And somebody doesn't do it. What, what do you do? How upset you will be. Very upset, especially if they see if they see the shoes are all outside and you put a special place, uh, these days some women even put a, a shoe cover or they put another, excuse me, a slipper or something. Nope, you insist on getting in. Will you invite her again? If she calls you and she needs help, will you do it? How rahim is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
and he gave us this beautiful massage and we come in here and we come in here and we are not covered and I, you know what I say the queen of England when she went to Al-Azhar if you haven't seen it go and see it she was covered she covered her hair she's not Muslim she's not required but out of respect to us and to our creator and here I am Muslim come in here as if literally I am outside subhanallah this is becoming a phenomena in masajid what I see these days I was like I couldn't believe it what happened to the woman what happened to us why why we don't look at this this is the house of my Lord my creator and he told me there's a dress code. You don't want to do it outside. As I said, get ready for answers when you are in front of him. That's a choice you made. But when you come to this masjid, it's not a choice. It's absolutely not a choice. Even some masjid put, put things outside. And women refuse to do it. And they get so offended. Why? You're not doing it for me. You're doing it for yourself. So please, all of you, Pay attention to this and teach the youth. And may Allah reward your parents. But teach the youth that they are coming to the masjid. This is the house of Allah. It has a hurma. It has, it's a sanctuary. Any house, it has a, it's a sanctuary. It has its own borders. Why do we take our shoes? Why do we take our shoes but we don't cover our hair? What is this? Why? I have no idea. Honestly, I don't have an answer. Let alone full makeup, false eyelashes, the hair is like that, and I'm in his house, and he still feeds me, and he still he gives me everything. Wallahi innahu la kareem. I bear witness Allah is generous. If this you and me, ah, I will teach her how to respect my house. Don't we do that? Right? And people come to us like, it's okay, she, maybe she doesn't know. No, she knows very well. Subhanallah. And then when you come to the house of Allah, I don't know. Tayyib, you don't know. People tell you and you get offended. So there's three things. And I, I'm not going to go to the detail because we will cover the questions after the salah. Alhamdulillah. Two more minutes and we need to get ready for salah. The first foundation is that don't show your beauty. Anything you are doing, to beautify yourself, the answer, you're not obeying Allah, period. Unless you are doing it for your husband and you're a woman who's completely covered, then that's fine. All scholars will tell you it's fine. Completely covered. Like when you go to Medina and you see them completely covered and they wear very wide, well, that's okay. But in general, don't show your beauty, that's number one. And that's for the non-mahram. And then there is haya when we are with women. When we get invited to weddings, to gatherings. It doesn't mean go and do whatever you want. I've seen women reading Quran and she is not covered. Not, not covered. Not covered. I couldn't believe it. I was like, Ya Rahman. Two. So there is haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's haya when we are together in women. And then the most important thing is when I come to his house. I hate to say anybody don't come. Subhanallah, who I am. But it's so painful when I see it. And I literally make dua for everyone. I was like, Ya Allah, you brought her. Ya Allah, make her dress the way that pleases you. Because when you come to the masjid and you're not dressed properly, it's not you. You're affecting others. This young 11 or 12 year old, with all the bombardment outside. She looks at you and she says, oh, she looks beautiful. She comes to the message, I'm coming. And becomes domino effect. And then now come and clear all this. So let us all be. And finally, the last word I want to say. If you are going to admonish somebody, then make sure you admonish them nicely. And you talk to her nicely. And the best way is, if there is, which I'm sure in all the masajid, there is, they usually put a skirt and a haircut. Just go and give it to her. Khalas. And in front of Allah, Allah, I did it. And if she didn't do it, you don't. If you don't know her, don't talk. 
Or you can say you look beautiful, but I'm sure you will look even more beautiful in front of Allah if you dress that. Say it in, and in a nice and a gentle way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us this, Ya Rabbi Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only teaches us, but give us literally the ability, the strength, the resolve to do it and to continue to do it. Ya Rabbi Ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. We'll return inshallah after Maghrib. And we will address the short questions. السلام عليكم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب شرح لي صدري so if you can also move here so the ladies who's gonna come they don't have to move on top of your heads to get there so to the sides please okay I'm gonna start with if there is any questions from the audience I mean as you can see I don't know there is at least 50 questions so there's a lot any questions from the audience before I start looking at the questions here Any question? So either you understood everything or you understood nothing. Which one? I hope the first one. <laughs> everything clear? Crystal? Okay, my eyes fell on this question. Uh, by the way, I don't know who, uh, who, who are the questionnaires. She said, can you explain the ayah, وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى and a lot of women go out with makeups. Jazakillahu khayran. So, tabarrujna, la tabarrujna, tabarruja al jahiliyati al ula. This is in Surah Al Ahzab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was saying to Aqarna fi buyuti kunna, he was addressing the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ummahatul mu'mineen, he says, Waqarna fi buyuti kunna, stay at home. And wala tabarrujna, tabarruja al jahiliyati al ula. And don't show your beauty or beautify yourself. Tabarruj is you beautify yourself and you show, show it in a way inviting um, too much, let's put it this way, okay? So he was saying, and, and the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تبرج because it was very well known. Like you say, um, for example, um, don't dress the way uh, the people of Pakistan dress. So of course you know it is shirwal qamis. Or if you, if you say, don't dress the way uh, like the Arabs dress. For example, what do you normally come to your mind? Abaya, right? So it's every, every country, every culture is defined by their dress code, which is absolutely fine, right? But the, the, the women of al-Jahiliya, they used to do too much. Too much showing and too much makeup and too much a lot of the things. So th then the question, she, she, this, the question, honestly, I have no, and no, no answer. You tell me. She said, then Allah, and the, the, the verse is clear in the Quran. And a lot of women go out with makeup. Can you explain it? What can I say? What can I say? You know what I say? I say, reestablish your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you have that connection, the makeup will, will feel nothing. The desire to put makeup and the desire to look beautiful and to impress people, and you know, all the reasons we do. When you have this personal, strong connection with him, it means nothing. You don't have the desire anymore. Like you go through stages, the first stage, as everything else in life, you struggle. But as you are struggling to leave, you are working hard to connect. The stronger the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you talk to him, you think of him, you know you're going to meet him, you want to please him. His obedience is number one. The more this gets stronger and stronger, the struggle becomes easier and easier and easier. And I'm not saying this, you don't read this in books. 
This is something you have to practice. And you see it all in Ramadan. I mean, the simple example is in Ramadan, right? Why do you come in the masjid and you do two, two hours of salah and a good number of you don't even know what the imam is reading? But you come. Why? Well, it's Ramadan. What does it mean? What does Ramadan mean? You are working hard on obedience to Allah. You're fasting, right? Number one, you're fasting. You're coming to the masjid. You are doing this. You're doing char charity. You're giving your zakah. It's Ramadan. People keep saying it's Ramadan. I was like, exactly. But what is really in Ramadan is your connection with Allah is stronger. You don't even have time to disobey Allah. Running around. So the less you disobey Allah, the more you obey Allah and you're connected, then these... Um, I, wanna, I call it one of the tricks of shaitan is actually is to beautify things for us he swore by it he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in surah to Nisa very clearly go and read that verse Allah starts saying in Allah la inna Allah la yaghfiru ayyushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha wa ma yushrik billahi faqad dalla dalalan ba'idah he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive that anyone will take God with him. And he will forgive whatever he wants outside that. And then he said, Whomsoever take another God with Allah. He went absolute, far in his astray path. Then comes what applies to us. He, they worship with him woman or female. Because they said angels. And now comes in. And they follow and they prefer a real hardcore, if you want to use the word, shaitan. And now see what shaitan said. You all need to know this verse. Because that's what he said to Allah, what he's going to do to you and me. وَقَالَ shaitan said, لَأَتَّخِذَنَّ مِنْ عِبَادِكَ نَصِيبًا مَفْرُوضًا I am gonna make sure I will have a portion of each of your servant. لَأَتَّخِذَنَّ and it's, it's in, in the Arabic language it's an emphasis in a style of emphasis but I'm gonna take from each one of your servants. He didn't say kafir. لَعِبَادِكَ نَصِيبًا مَفْرُوضًا What he's gonna do? Look at this. وَلَأُضِلَّنَّهُمْ and I'm going to make sure they go astray. I'm going to make them wish and love things that you don't like. And look at the next one. I am going to order them. And what are they going to do? They're going to make the ears of the an'am, uh, the cattle. They're going to cut it. Because Allah said, don't do that. And now applies to you and me. I am going to order them and they're going to change their, the way they look. Is it true? And Allah says, And Allah says, Whomsoever will take shaitan as his close friend, he is absolutely a huge loser. And look what is happening these days. All the plastic surgeries, all the changes. I don't like the way I look. I don't like my nose. I don't like my, my lips. I don't like the way my... Are you, you name it, you hear it from women. And what did he taught us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasul salatu wa What did he teach us? What did he taught us? When we look at the mirror, do what? Say what? Ya Allah, kama hassanta khalqi, fahassan khuluqi. Ya Allah, just like you created me so beautiful. Please make my inner look beautiful. And we look at ourselves in the mirror and says, why do I look like this? Why don't I have a colored eyes? This is the norm these days, right? This is one of the questions. Norm these days. People put, put uh, uh, contact. I was like, why are you, is that your eye color? No, it's a contact. Why? You know what you're really telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can anyone answer me? What are you telling Allah this? Now, let me just, and then I'll come to you. What are you telling Allah? I don't like the way you created me. You better have an answer when you meet him. 
the creator الخالق إن الله فالق الحب والنوى the creator who split the pit who brings the fruits and I am the weak the sinner the one who's going to end up in the dust and becomes nothing I stand up and I say I don't like the way he created me and you know what he still feed me and he still give me health and he still respond to my dua Wallahi, none of us will do that. None of us will do that. So why people do that, don't ask me. I wish I have an answer. I don't. Subhanallah, yes. They are not changing it. Now you have these. The, you have to 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 know, to know a difference between excuse me between changing the creation of Allah, or there is something acne, right? Acne is not Allah created me with acne. Acne happened to me. Some people doesn't. So I'm gonna put a treatment. It's a it's a disease. It happens in the back. It's very annoying. It's not only they don't like it. It's very annoying. It, it makes them itch, it makes them feel not comfortable. So she is putting treatment or she is putting concealer to, to make it look better. That's okay because that's not going to be, you're not changing, you're not uh, attracting attention. That's fine. But I'm talking about real beauty. Like why do I want to change the color of my eyes? I mean, honestly, I can't understand this. Why? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with the way the best of the creation, Tabarakallahu, أحسن الخالقين. That's what he said in the Quran. You all read it. All these women read it in the Quran. Allah says, "Tabarak Allah, blessed He is the best of the He, the best Creator, the best. You go to the best doctor, you go to the best engineer, and then the best Creator. You don't like the way He, he created you, and you want to change it. The only thing I say, I'm making du'a to everybody and myself included, because it is a phenomenon beyond." Beyond. Everywhere, by the way, not only in this country. Everywhere. You go to Muslim worlds, you see the same story. It's the norm. SubhanAllah. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to ask the question, you answer me. Yeah. Can you wear, can you wear fake nails? Or n nail polish and pray? Can you use fake hair if it is not human hair? Bismillah. Where is the Mufti? Um, he's too busy. <laughs> That's okay. Let me read it again. Let, let's, let's also slice the question. Because it's three questions. Can I wear fake nails? Huh? Well, you didn't ask the most important question. Why you're doing it? Actually, remember what we said. Foundation. لا يبدين زينتهن. Why you're doing? Why you're putting a fake nail? Why? Is you have no nails at all? No, no, there is. There is diseases. People lose their nails, right? And then you are just putting just the minimum so you can function better. Then, yeah, that's treatment. But you have everything beautiful Allah created me. I just want to make it longer. What is this called? What is this called? Beauty. And you are showing it. The answer is, لا يبدين زينتنا. I'm not going to say haram. I will never say this word. I'm going to keep reminding you of the, what Allah said because you need to know this. Don't show your beauty. Same story. What, can, I, can I put a nail polish and pray? What is the most important prerequisition of one of the prerequisitions of salah? Is wudu. Nail polish will negate. And plus, you are already disobeying Allah. Then you answer me. And then, can you use fake hair? Allah, this is a curse. That hadith is well known. Curse the woman, al wasila wal mustawsila, the woman who put extra hair to make her long, her long, and the one who does it for her. Both, wal washima wal mutawashim, the one who do, who does tattoos, she does, or the one who does tattoo for her. That's la and that's Rasulullah sallam. You don't like it, you don't like it. Again, you better have a good excuse when you are there. I can't change this deen to make people happy. You know what I said yesterday? I told you, the deen is beautiful and full of sugar. I don't have to sugarcoat it. 
It's so sweet. I don't have to put any more sugar or syrup on it. You like it, you like it. You don't like it, that's a choice you made. خلص. But don't justify it. It's what I keep telling people. Be courageous to stand up and says, I like it and I know I shouldn't do it and I am doing it. And I will pray for you. But don't tell me it's okay. And you're going to go around and around. You know? You know, like the Jews. What Allah said in the Quran, Allah t- told them, don't fish on Saturday. What did they do? We don't fish on Saturday, but we're going to put the net on Friday night. And then on Sunday, we'll pick it up. What is that? Just say, I can. Say, I like it. Say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy on me. I'll pray for you. But don't say, no, it's not fard, hijab is not fard, what's wrong with putting nail polish, what's po- wrong with putting makeup, and then you try to justify it and make it uh, uh, like what we say, fluid. Don't. As a busy woman trying to practice modesty, how to find time and space to beautify self for spouse with parents, in-laws in the house? Practically. I like the question. The question is the answer is in the Quran. That's why we need to learn our Quran, ya ladies. It's the answer is clear in this ayah. Don't show your beauty except husband, husband, father. Done. Or their children, or the children of their husband. Read the ayah, read the verse. It's Surah Nisa, Nur, I think it's verse 53. Read it, and then you don't have to worry about it, practically. However, there is limits with the husband, and there is limits with the other maharam. Yani there is part, and just because this is public and you're out of haya, but you all know what I'm talking about. So when Allah says, don't show your beauty, there's a limit to that beauty. And that beauty, the only th- one can see is the husband, the spouse, the husband or the wife. But then for the others, it's also a limit to this. And there is like stages. You know what I say? And I have seen it, and again, as a physician, the deen of Islam is a deen of prevention. is not deen of treatment. It's a deen that gives you vaccine before you get the COVID. And if you learn this concept, you will know why Allah said, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. When he said, don't have free intermingle. Let not a woman uh, be alone with a man. Let the man and the woman lower their gaze. Don't show your beauty. All these are prevention. All these are prevention. Which is better, take the vaccine or get the COVID? If you know why Allah said no, and we have seen it, didn't we see it in the Me Too movement? Didn't we all see it? We lived it. What happened in the Me Too movement? It was free, right? And the woman couldn't say a thing. And the first thing they did, you know what? In the, in the real world, no meeting between a man and a woman alone. I was like, subhanAllah. لا يخلوان رجل بمرأة إلا وثالثهم الشيطان. Rasul said, no man and a woman stay together alone, but the third is shaytan. And that's what they, one of the things they did. No more meeting between man and a woman alone. Subhanallah. Let's see. Any qu- Yes. That's a different story. No. But that was... You need to know there's always exceptions to the rule in everything. I gave you an exception of the rule about the alcohol. Allah said this concept, this is one of the principles in the Quran. Whom will be forced or need to do something haram out of necessity without transgressing the limits. Allah said three, four times, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Nahal. He said that in Al-Ma'idah. That's a different story, completely, right? But I am I'm, I'm living in a country, I don't have to do that. And, and the, the, the extension of the hair didn't make the difference because the hadith didn't say about a, a, woman, a human hair or an animal hair. It's al-wasida, the one who do the extension. 
because it's a beauty and it's an extreme beauty on the same story. Any, anyone else? Okay, let me, I don't know which question I read. This one is not related to uh, beauty, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, okay, so it says, how do you, pa this is a good question. How to balance adornment and modesty without being extreme in any way or the other? It's a very good question. Because we are ummah wasata. We are a, a, a nation, or we are, an, a, a, yeah, we are a nation of balance. We're in the middle. We're not right, we're not left. We're not Republican, we're not Democrat. We're not, we're Muslims, right? So this is what I always tell my, my sisters, all my, my beautiful sisters. When you decide to wear hijab, you will need to, need to, be, to look the most beautiful woman in the way pleases Allah. It doesn't mean you're not gonna look nice. It doesn't mean you're gonna wear whatever and you're gonna, not, and you're gonna look ugly or you're not gonna look tidy, no. But it's in, with this, within the standards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what you, what you wear doesn't bring attention, color-wise, details-wise, material-wise. You know what I'm talking about. So yes, this is how it is. You always have to do moderation in the middle. Go for example, some people say, I'm not comfortable with abaya. Absolutely, you don't have to wear abaya. Who said you have to wear abaya? Whatever it makes you comfortable. Right? You go and get, uh, somebody just asked me in the break, you go and, and buy these long shirts. These days it's very common, right? Long shirts. And long shirts will go absolutely under your knees. And under it you put a white pants and you match the colors, but not flashy colors. And then you look very nice and match your scarf with it. Alhamdulillah, Literally, I mean, some women with the hijab, they are like so, I, I, rem I remember somebody, I, like I, I was seeing this, this was in a public library. The woman stopped her and told her, you need to be a, a model for the Muslim ladies. What is this beautiful you are wearing? And it was not bringing a, a, attention or zina, but it was so well dressed. You know what I'm saying? Khalas. That's how it is. And the, the, I mean, the, the woman who doesn't wear hijab, they all are absolutely fantastic, no? So look at the modesty. Dress properly, and the question you always say, look at the mirror and say, Ya Allah, are you happy with me? And he will give you the answer, by the way. This is the same question. Can women wear rings or bracelets? Good question. I'm sure that's a youth. I have, an, I have a feeling. I don't know why, but I think. Can a woman wear rings or bla bracelets? Everybody's now looking at their hands. <laughs> So, what is the first question you're all going to ask? Why you are wearing it? Khalas, <laughs> well, this is how it is. Why you are wearing it? Right? Why you are wearing it? Like you're a married woman, you're wearing your, your uh, uh, wedding ring. That's, you, that's the norm, right? And you're very used to it. And some women married, they don't wear it. But if I am wearing all these bracelets, Right? What did Allah says in Surah An-Nur? Again in Surah An-Nur. What did He say? At the end of the ayah of the hijab. وَلَا يَضْرُبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّ لِيُعْلَمَ مَا يُخْفِينَ مِنْ زِينَتِهِنَّ Do not wear what they call it خِلْخَال in the, in the Arab world. You know, the same bracelet. And the bracelet, what do they call it? A, a, aglet. So you wear it, but it, it makes sound when you walk. And also compatible to it. I thank you. Exactly, high heels. It will bring attention. And Allah says, don't do it because it will show your beauty. Right? SubhanAllah. Yani, if you, if you, honestly, if you come to this with a absolutely a, a balanced heart, you are not to this or to that. And just, just think of yourself, not yourself. Think of someone, right? And then see what do they dress. And why do they dress this way? And what kind of a heel? And how high? And what color? And how they walk? Why? That's a nice one. That means another uh, workshop. Uh, hopefully I can at least cover a little bit. Advice to beautify manners and character, subhanAllah, to be adhering 
to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it relates to this topic? It's a very good question. How do I beautify me internally? Because that's what we talked about, remember? We said the beauty is outside, which we all spend money, time, but what is the beauty inside? You always go back to make it very easy. Go back again to the Quran and now look at the woman in the Quran. And which woman comes to your mind right away? Sayyidah Maryam, right? No woman in the Quran was praised as much as she was. SubhanAllah. But there was nothing about how she looks. Did you pay attention? Allah is the creator. He could have said that. No, I mean, what we think of Sayyidah Maryam is what, when we see it from the non-Muslims. Allah didn't say anything. What did, she, what did he describe her? Look at Surah Maryam. What did he describe her? What called fil kitabi Maryam? Right? إِذْ انْتَبَثَتْ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا مَكَانًا شَرْقِيًّا Recite to them, tell them about Maryam. What did she do, number one? She spent time alone. Remember what we talked about in the retreat? اتخذت من أهلها مكانا شرقيا. She took a corner in the east away from her family. Why? Because when you are alone, you have time to think of you and yourself and your relationship with Allah. You think of it as like, why this number one? And as she was alone, فاتخذت من دونهم حجابا. She put a barrier between her and her and her family. What is the barrier? He didn't say barrier. Physical. We don't know, but barrier, meaning it's my time, it's me, and this time is with Allah. How many of us have their hard time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Salat al-Isha, Allah knows how we do it. Dead, not much left in us. فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِنْ دُونِهِمْ حِجَابًا فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثْرَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيًّا As she was alone, I need you to feel this. Imagine I am here in the masjid. And suddenly a man enter on me. Ooh, what will happen to you? Alone. And the man. And Allah puts him in, in the form of a man. Angel. A very well looking man. Sawiya. Immediately. I seek refuge in Allah. In kunta taqiyya, she reminded him, be Allah conscious. She's alone. That's the beauty. Do I have this in me? What is the first beauty in her? When she is in trouble, the first thing come out of her mouth was what? Allah. Ya Allah, protect me. And immediately, فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِنْ فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيَا قَالَتْ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَنِ مِنْكَ إِنْ كُنْتَ تَقِيَّ Immediately, Allah protected her. قَالَ إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَسُولُ رَبِّكِ I am the messenger of your Lord. Now she feels good. Because the word of Allah. لِأَهَبَ لَكِ غُلَامًا زَكِيَّا I'm going to give you a child, purified child. That's how she was described. And look at the other, the other. وَالَّتِي أَحْصَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا No name in this ayah. فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ رُوحِنَا وَجَعَلْنَاهَا وَبْنَهَا آيَةً للعالمين. Allah said this in Surah Al-Anbiya. No name here. But of course we all know. How was she described? Protected her private part. Remember? Remember what we said about what's, what's al-haya? You protect the private part. That's how Allah described her. أَحْصَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا and you know what Ahsanat Farja had the whole main bigger meaning? You don't look at anything that will move the desire in you. You don't look at anything that's haram. Because Rasulullah said, every part of the body will have a share of adultery. You know this hadith? The eye will commit adultery. The ear will commit adultery. And the mouth will commit adultery. And then the private part will respond or not. So when I look at haram, I look at these movies, I look at these, yani what do you see on TV? What do you see on TV? Or when I listen to music or songs, especially if I see it, shows, what are they doing? And, and then how can I be Sayyidah Maryam? 
And then the private part, you will respond or you will not respond. That's how she was described. That's what it is. That's what modesty is all about. Is that Allah is your focus. You want to please him, number one. You go and work and you do all your thing and you're very successful. This has nothing to do with being successful in life. Don't blame it on it. Don't blame it. You have seen so many examples these days. Did you see the picture, the video of the, the senator from Australia? Did you see it? It's the most beautiful woman in Australia. She became a senator, full hijab. What is the excuse? And I always say this, and I'm number one, I'm, I went through it when I put my hijab. It's me. It's me. It's inside me. The struggle is in me. I, I look ugly. You look at yourself. What did I do to myself? Because the standard of beauty is not the standard of beauty of Allah. It's the standard of beauty of this company and that company. And do you know the beauty industry? How much money they make? You know that Sephora that you, everybody in lines to buy from them? Billions. Billions of dollars. Not million. Billions. All these products you buy, they make at least 75% profit. And they take it from you and me and they sell to us that the beauty is this way. And they don't care about my akhirah and your akhirah. Uh, every, everything is about dollar and cents. And I fall in that trap. Subhanallah. Now this is very detailed. Are wearing, are wearing colorful colors. Look at the colors now. Now you answer me. Dusty pink, mint green. This is really detailed, All right? Baby blue. <laughs> <laughs> considered as adorning oneself. What about abayas <laughs> that have pearls or glittery design? What about wearing jewelry, rings and watches, extra or heels? Question mark. What do you see? What do you say here? Well, this is a question I'm reading it. <laughs> Number one is why, right? And it all depends. It all depends how do you look. Are you, when you're wearing whatever, the mint green? What kind, what are you wearing? What is it, the mint green? That the color can add for sure to the beauty, but it's not the color that brings the beauty. It's usually what are you wearing, all right? And if you look at yourself and you say, this is really beautiful, then you think of it. Uh, Okay, I'm, I'm choosing only the, the, the questions related to beauty. Okay, that's a good one. Do we have to cover our hair in front of a non-Muslim woman as well? Can we wear short sleeves in front of our brother's dad extra? Are we allowed to wear makeup outside, even just light makeup, like tinted, I love this, like tinted moisturizers? and tinted lip. <laughs> I'm just reading the question. <laughs> May Allah forgive us all. <laughs> but it's a reality, so we really have to look at it. Even just light makeup, like tinted moisturizer, right? And tinted lip balms, for example. Not done. Are we allowed to wear bright colored clothing that is completely loose, like a long red, Loose jacket. I'm reading questions. <laughs> right. Bismillah. Now I know why Sheikh Yasin sent it to me. <laughs> Let's take it one by one. This will take the whole, <laughs> the whole question and answer. We have only less than 30 minutes. Because 9.30 is Aisha. Do we have to cover our hair in front of a non-Muslim? Let's see, Mufti, you're too tired. Okay. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. Huh? And then Muslim woman, that's the question. Yes, no, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> the whole idea about wearing uh, or not wearing or not covering, not wearing your hijab and covering is you are, is you are worried that this woman will describe you outside. And I will say it's not necessarily only non-Muslim. 
Because a lot of the Muslim women don't know that. I personally was, was involved in this. A woman was telling me, well, oh, we missed you yesterday in the wedding. I, I couldn't go, I don't, I don't remember. And, um, oh, you should see this one and this one and this one. And I was telling my husband, and I said, telling your husband what? He said, oops. She was describing them. But she didn't do it intentionally. No, because you made it, oops. So, be careful. If you know the woman, they know, then, yeah. But, but that doesn't mean what we said earlier. That doesn't mean it's an open invitation. You're going to do every, remember the haya. Remember the haya from Allah. This, the question is specifically about the hair. So if you are sure the people will not describe you, you're fine. But that doesn't mean you're going to come out full-fledged everything. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Can we wear we can we wear short sleeves in front of our brother's dad extra? What does she mean by short sleeves? If it is just the short sleeves and then things are loose, yeah, that's fine. But if you're talking about more than that, be be careful. There's a lot of issues. You know what I'm talking about. A lot of problems happens because of that, and cousins. And sometimes, even brothers and sisters. So that's why I kept saying, الحياء, الحياء, be modest, be bashful, teach yourself this. Subhanallah, some of you may remember this. We grew up this way. We grew up this way. It was, it was unheard of you do this, right? But there is a reason. It's not because just because it's culture. It's coming from the religion. حياء, bashful. You know, you don't have to. You want, you want to look beautiful and look at your, do it in your room. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi. But outside, make sure always that you are not showing all your beauty. Be careful with that. Are we allowed to wear makeup outside? I think we have, yeah, but the tinted moisturizer, because she put it like, as long as it is not bringing beauty, right? That's fine. If that's going to make you okay, it's okay. And if I cannot tell you are putting it, that's okay. But, but that doesn't mean all the makeup. And then, um, are we allowed to wear bright colored clothing? Most of the time, the answer is no. If you're wearing a long red loose jacket coming to the masjid, what is going to happen? Everybody is going to be looking at you. Then you are, that's not the reason. So usually the answer is no. Ah, what, what, what is this question? Does hugging the opposite gender count as zina? Don't be surprised. It's the norm outside. If you work in the real world, it's normal. Does anyone here work outside the world and you see what? Right, absolutely. Norm. Unless from day one you put that barrier. As a Muslim woman, it's very normal. The, yani the, for them, like when, when I see you shake the hand and I hug you, that's ours normal. For, for the non-Muslims, is for the opposite gender. This person works. And is it considered a zina? So zina is, in the Quran, it's used to mean the intimate relationship outside marriage. So it is not intimate relationship outside marriage, but it is a muqaddima we say it's an introduction and what did we say islam is a, a, a deen of prevention there should not to be there is you should not uh, shake the hands with the opposite gender what about hugging but again don't blame the other part because they don't know i have to teach them no thank you you do it once or else. and I, I, I have never seen people get offended to be honest with you they just didn't know I have heard mixed opinion. Okay, we answered that. Okay, so this is a good question. For, go for converts who have tattoos, removing them is also said to be harming the body. Should we keep them if they are not offensive? So this is a convert, subhanAllah, Allah guided them. Walillahi alhamd. And now she had tattoo or he had tattoo from before. What do they do? She answered you. Should we keep them if they are not offensive? 
Yes or no? Wallah, there is no mufti in this room. The question, it depends. Is moving them harmful? I don't know. She needs to go, not painful, harmful. There's a difference. Because if anything is harmful to the body, I should not do it. So this needs to be, she needs to go and check, or he needs to go and check. Is it really harmful to my body to remove it? I don't know, I don't have this information. I don't have this knowledge. If the answer is yes, then she keeps them, but she covers them. And in Islam, يَهِدُّ مَا قَبْلَ Once you become a Muslim, whatever you do before Islam is all gone. وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ Okay. Ah, that's a good question. Very good question. It's a deep one. It's nothing to do about external. So how can, how do we balance having our individual, unique personalities while also trying to emulate the character, manner of our pious female Muslim role models? For example, Sayyida Maryam, Sayyida Aisha, etc. Very good question. Did you get the question? Yes, everybody? So, what is the answer? I don't know. I'll Google. What is the answer? Let me read it one more time. How can or how do we balance having our own individual unique personalities while also trying to emulate the character slash manner of our pious female Muslim role models? Really, that hard? I can't hear you. You, didn't un you don't understand the question. So she says, I have my own personality, but I want to be like Sayyida Maryam, and I want to be like Sayyida Aisha. How can I do that? But I have my own personality. That's the question. Yes. What's your name, my beauty? Anam, mashallah. Okay, so you didn't find the middle ground yet. That's what you heard a question. <laughs> May Allah make it easy for you. Ya Rabbi Amin. So any, yes. What's your name, my dear? Saba. Laqad kana li sabain fi maskanihim aya. MashaAllah. Yeah. I can't hear you, Yasaba. Yes. I, I want to hear because that's a good start. Can you give her the mic? Does this mic work? Because I want you to hear. She absolutely got the question. She understood the question. Yes. Does it work? There is something in the... Yep. Bismillah. Yes. Doesn't? Tayyip. Yes, okay. alhamdulillah. All right, so, <laughs> um, I was just, you, know, you don't have to try to have a unique personality. You just are your personality, you know? So, so you this can... is the most important word. Who Allah created you, your personality, you don't need to change it. But what is the word she used? You need to carve it. Did you see the point? Carve it. What is carve? So you have a piece of wood. It stays wood. But you change it. But how do you change it? In which direction you changed it? You, you just, when you see their, you study their character and you look at the, um, all the amazing things they did and your character and your personality are two different things. The way you, um, being able to help people and being a good person doesn't change your personality. And if it does, it's for the good. Absolutely. So here you go. So you look at yourself, all of you. Are you the personality of Sayyida Aisha? Are you the personality of Sayyida Khadija? Are you the personality of both? 
Are you the personality of Umm Salama? Are you the personality of Sayyidah Zainab? Which one you are closer to? You don't have to change everything. Everybody has to be Sayyidah Aisha. Everybody has to be Sayyidah Khadija. You can do that. Where do I look at exactly what you said? I love the word carving. I look at myself. What did Allah gave me? Maybe I am like Al-Ashaj. Allah already gave me uh, uh, modesty. Why do I need to change it? Rabbi lak alhamd. Right? Maybe Allah gave me the, the sharpness, the smartness of Sayyida Aisha. I want to keep it. But I look at what negatives Allah gave me. A'udhu Billah. What negatives is in me? Not Allah gave me. A'udhu Billah. I took it from surroundings. And now I come to these negatives and then I say, you know what? Let me work on one or two. For example, Sayyida Aisha, how strong she was. I don't think there is any woman in the history as strong as Sayyida Aisha. Personality, smartness, form, and when she's tested, talk about strong woman. But when it came to Haya, when it came to modesty, what did she say? After the Rasul died, she was doing tawaf. And they usually have someone with them. So the woman with her says, why don't we move to get a little bit closer to the Kaaba? She said to me, I am going to be in the middle of all these men. That's Haya. I want to be this. But also I want to be the strong woman when they accuse me and I am honest, I'm going to stand up for my right. And then my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you don't have to change, but you carve it. Remove the negative, but you can't remove anything unless you know what is the negative. So when people come and say something negative to you, don't brush them. Take it. Don't say no, just listen. And then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is it true, Ya Allah? Maybe I'm not seeing it. Or maybe they are jealous. Is it true? And if it's true, show me how do I change it. So it's very nice answer, Ya Sabah. And all what I keep is if it pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it pleases Allah, I don't change it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Already, how many teenagers in this room? Already, that's questions for you. How do we get young teenage girls to not to be afraid of putting the hijab? A million dollar question. How do we get young teenage girls to not be afraid of putting the hijab? First question before I answer, is the mother doing proper hijab? See what I said? I said proper hijab. Don't ask your children to do something and you're not doing it. They will not listen. It's not beneficial. I say always this myself. I'm going to be like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in Surah Al-Saf. Why do you say things and you don't do it? So that's number one. Number two. Hijab is not at age 14 or, or 13 or whenever the menstruation starts. It's not a switch. And you just turned it. Hijab is a haya practice. It's a modesty practice. I need to teach them from young age, not force them. There's a difference. It's you teach them that the modesty is part of the character, what we all talked about. So I'm not going to let her wear whatever she wants to wear, right? And two pieces and, and everything is showing while she's young. And I always say this to the woman, OK? But then don't come to me and complain when she is 12 and 13, she will not put her hijab because she can't do it. She's not used to it. It's not a switch right away you do it. So this is how you start. You start if you're really planning and you're wishing and you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your daughter to put her hijab easily, you work on her when she was young from four and five and six and what you wear. And yani, I've seen women, mashallah, amazing dresses the girls are wearing. You know how beautiful it is? But never a dress without something under it. Under it, uh, down to the knee. Or if they're wearing two pieces, like children, children. You know, if she's wearing a pants, something on top longer. Never things too tight. You need to prepare her. You can't just come and force her. What is will happen? She'll do it in the house. She leaves, she's not going to do it. One. And two, you need to engrave in them the love of Allah. 
and she is doing it for him. She's not doing it for you. This is the main problem we have as Muslims. We don't know Allah. Let alone we don't know his, who is he and we, we, we glorify him. Look at our salah adults. Uh, we blame our uh, uh, youth. Look at us. Everything is more important than Allah. Am I correct? Please forgive me. But am I not? Uh, am I exaggerating? How do you think that 12 or 13 or 14 living in this flood of brainwash, she's going to come and do it right away? Wallahi, I look up to every young woman who wears hijab in this day and age. And she is modest. I was like, Ya Allah, keep her strong. Literally, last week, one, I, I said this in the retreat, like an angel. And I was doing the same, and she was in front of me, pulled me outside. Says, I want to talk to you privately. I was like, Ya Habibati. And she starts crying, said, It's very difficult. This is very hard. And I don't want to change, but it's very hard. There's a lot of pressure on me. It's true. But then I need my home environment, me as a mother, me as a father, me as a family, to make it easier for them. And just don't blame her and, you, and then you're going to go to Jahannam. They go to college and you lose them and they, you're done. So engrave it in them from young age and you practice and you make the masjid your home. And when you come to the masjid, you respect the masjid, you dress properly. She sees what you dress, she follows you. What time is it? Okay, five more minutes. <sighs> ah, practical. How does a Muslim sister maintain modesty while on social media? How many of you have social media? <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> right? TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all of the above. Okay. So the question is, how does a Muslim sister maintain modesty while on social media? The, the, why? That's, that's, I fully disagree with you. There is no modesty on social media. You haven't seen any of my clips on social media? This is on social media. We are, everything we are doing is on social media. It's live streamed. No. See, this is not the right answers to say. Everything Allah created, everything, this bottle of water can be haram. And as I said, the, the, the alcohol can be obligation. There's nothing black and white right away. And my answer, very simple, right? What you are outside social media, you are inside social media. You are modest outside, you are modest inside. Because it's you. You're taking the pictures, you're posting. So it's not, I'm, unless you think social media, I have to be immodest to be on social media, the answer is go and look at all the lectures on social media. So social media does not force me to be immodest. It's my choice. We need to accept this. We need to acknowledge it, everything I do is my choice. What I post, does anybody put a gun on my head and tell me to post it? No. Whether you have dinner party and all this food and you're taking all these pictures, you went for a vacation and the whole world need to know you went for a vacation. That's your choice. Right? You're all laughing, but that's what everybody does. Subhanallah. Last one. That's very nice question. Subhanallah, Allah made me read it. How do I adorn, or she said, how do we adorn ourselves in a way that pleases Allah and satisfy ourselves at the same time? Very nice question. It's reality. And I love to put lipstick. So I'm gonna do that. For example, makeup, dress beautifully. What do you do? Everyone is looking at me. <laughs> There's a lot of work in this community. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's saying with ourselves, I'm assuming alone. So this is the first thing you're going to ask. Because it's only a, a short question. Is this is alone or this is in public? Can I adorn myself in public and still please Allah? 
Yes, yes. It's just you dress with a dress code, is what Allah said. But can it be the most beautiful shirwal qameez without attracting attention and you look so modest? Haven't you seen people who look so beautiful and nice and they are dressed properly? But they don't turn heads and they, you don't look at them in a different way? Yes, absolutely. This is what I was trying to say from the beginning. Obeying Allah doesn't mean I'm going to look ugly. I need you to all know that. Because Allah will not want me like this. And he knows what is inside me as a woman. I need to tell myself, I look beautiful. And more beautiful because I obey Allah. Three, Allah doesn't look at me. He looks at me inside and my actions. So dress beautifully. I, mean, I was just saying to somebody, right? If you are a woman who does sports, get again these long shirts and make sure they don't see through and under it you wear a pants and you're fine. And you, if you want to, I usually buy one size bigger, something that it doesn't describe the shape of your body. But absolutely you can do that. And wallahi, and I say this, and this is the last thing I'm going to say. If you really want to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are in that struggle, and you know what struggle we all go through, but you really want to obey Him, wallahi alladhi ya'lahu, He will make it so easy. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. You know what he will do? He will remove it from your heart. That struggle. You will, he will remove it. You don't care anymore. You don't care anymore about makeup. You will not ask these questions. You just don't. And you just look at the mirror and he says, Ya Allah, are you pleased with me? This is why I keep saying, I started and I will end with this. Work on your relationship with Allah. He is the one who's going to make you strong. You as yourself, as a woman, is very difficult. And again, with all the social media and everything, work on you. In your sujood, when you are so close to him, beg him and cry, make me the woman you want me to be. Look at me and say what a woman she is. I can, and say it to him, I can't do it, Ya Allah. I'm so weak. And all the scholars teaches you the best way to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when you acknowledge your weakness, weaknesses. I can't enter Qawi. You are the strong Qawini. Make me strong. Make me, I don't care when I go outside and everybody is looking at me. What is she wearing? I, make me, I don't care. Make me, I don't see them. And what do you think he will do? He will let you? Hasha. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ulaik. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasleem. And kathira, my apology to all the others who ask all these questions. But there's a time limit to what we can do. We need to get ready for Salat Laisha. Five more minutes, inshaAllah.